Today I had a chance uh, to meet with some younger students, some students who were, uh, I don't know, eight or ten years old uh, at the Municipal Library. Uh, and uh, at the Municipal Library I was very uh, pleased to uh, uh, give on behalf of the United States uh, to a Polish public library, uh, something called America at Your Library. A Polish library was the first uh, library in Poland uh, to receive this uh, from the United States, and I encourage all of you to check it out. Uh, in, in addition to books uh, about the United States, uh, maybe more importantly for your work and research, are uh, uh, free access to uh, uh, more than three dozen uh, databases, uh, not, not just about the United States, but really about any subject. And these are the same databases that are available to researchers and students in the United States and now available to all of you in the Kola uh, at, at, the, at the library. So uh, the subject of today's uh, uh, talk is uh, transatlantic relations and U.S.-Polish uh, relations. You're all uh, uh, university students at one of Poland's top universities, so I don't need to tell you very much. I'm assuming you know it already. But um, obviously, Poland and the United States have a great history together. We have great democratic traditions. Our countries are the countries uh, who are responsible for the world's first two written constitutions. Uh, and of course, we have a long history uh, together. Uh, your uh, forefathers fought with our forefathers for America's independence. Uh, and um, that's something that all Americans know and all Americans appreciate. And uh, uh, we, of course, are very proud of the small supporting role we play in Poland's uh, democratic uh, transition. Uh, there's a new statue across uh, uh, my embassy uh, in Warsaw of uh, President uh, Ronald Reagan, uh, which uh, President Bawetsa and I were privileged uh, to dedicate earlier this year. And I'm amazed every day in front of the statue of President Reagan, there are uh, flowers, candles, people stop to pay tribute. By the way, I'm a Democrat, not a Republican, uh, uh, but uh, all Americans appreciate the role that Ronald Reagan played, and certainly all Poles uh, uh, appreciate the role that uh, all American presidents have uh, played throughout the Cold War and since to support uh, uh, Poland's democratic transition. And you probably know this, but I want you to know that, that we know this, that in the United States, and around the world, when people think about Poland, they think about one of the world's most successful democratic transitions. And certainly one of the world's most successful democratic transitions of uh, the last decades of the 20th century. So when people think of Poland, they associate Poland with solidarity, they associate Poland with uh, democracy. And uh, this is a great tribute to all of you, which you are all carrying on by uh, uh, studying uh, and doing well for yourselves and uh, well for your country, too. My job as ambassador is um, how to build on the great past that the United States and Poland share. We have bonds of uh, friendship and bonds of family. Uh, as you know, Chicago is, has the second largest population of Poles in the world after Warsaw. Uh, and we talked about the great tradition of uh, Kosciuszko and others uh, between Poland and the United States. And uh, during uh, the Cold War, we helped to support Poland's democratic transition, to support solidarity. We were strong backers of Poland's membership in NATO and later Poland's membership in the European <coughs> Union. These are great successes. So the job of the United States and Poland now is uh, to build on that past and uh, to forge a relationship for this century, for the 21st century, for the century that you will make. 
And in doing so, we think about three pillars of cooperation. Security, prosperity, and uh, democracy. And I will, I will uh, start, I will end with prosperity because this is a technical university and I think we may be most interested in that. But let me start about security, with security. Security, of course, is fundamental. It's a fundamental part of our relationship. And today, our security relations, relations between Poland and the United States, uh, between our militaries, uh, between our foreign policy establishments, has never been uh, closer. Um, of course, uh, Poland uh, and uh, America fight together in Afghanistan. Uh, but there's much more uh, to our cooperation uh, than uh, that uh, uh, fight together, which of course all Americans are very grateful for. Uh, later this year, um, the United States will uh, open um, an aviation detachment uh, uh, in uh, uh, at Wasp Air Base near Wuch. And this will be the first continuous presence of American soldiers uh, in Poland. It's uh, a modest project. It starts small, but it has great promise and it's of important uh, uh, significance symbolically showing the United States a commitment to Poland's security. Poland was also the first country to uh, uh, agree and ratify an agreement to uh, uh, accept NATO missile defense uh, systems uh, in Poland, and those will be in place in 2018, and the first stage of NATO's uh, missile defense system is uh, already um, uh, underway in the southern tier of Europe. And when uh, we all meet uh, together in Chicago in May, there will be a summit in Chicago in May uh, of uh, all NATO countries, including Poland, um, uh, we will declare the initial uh, phase of uh, what we call uh, the phased adaptive approach to missile defense to be uh, uh, underway and, and, and operational. Um, we also cooperate on democracy. I talked about how uh, democracy has become a proud trademark of Poland around the world. We have a special uh, partnership with uh, Poland working uh, first to promote democracy in the eastern neighborhood to the east of uh, Poland, and in particular with uh, Ukraine, uh, Belarus, and Moldova. This is hard work, and uh, progress is slow. Uh, but uh, what we are able to do uh, has been uh, made possible uh, by Polish and American cooperation in, 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 in large measure. For example, um, Poland uh, and the United States have very similar views toward the dictatorship in Belarus. And Poland and the United States together forged a policy not only uh, to sanction Lukashenko and those around him, but also to provide money to uh, democratic activists inside Belarus. And our agreement, Pol Polish and American agreement to do so, has also helped forge transatlantic agreement uh, on Belarus so that there's no difference of opinion uh, between the EU, any members of the EU, and the United States on how to approach uh, Belarus. We've also been working very uh, closely together on Ukraine to help Ukraine uh, make the right decisions about its future. This is also a long-term project, but it's important in trying to uh, affect Ukraine's decisions that the government and people of Ukraine know that the people of the United States, the people of Poland, and all of the people in the transatlantic community are of one mind that the people in Ukraine ought to have a strong voice and say in the governance of their own country. Let me talk a little bit about the third pillar of our relationship, prosperity. Uh, trade between Poland and the United States is probably more than you think. When we uh, look at what the level of investment is uh, in Poland, it's about uh, the, the net value of American investment in Poland is roughly $30 billion. Uh, we estimate between three and 400,000 Poles in Poland work directly or indirectly for 
American companies, and we're very proud of it. And I can tell you anecdotally from uh, the people I meet, from the business leaders who come to the United States, uh, to Poland, uh, from the United States, that they are increasingly interested in opportunities here in Poland. They're interested in opportunities for manufacturing. They're interested in opportunities uh, for uh, real estate. But I think of interest to you that they're, they're interested as well in the technical and scientific expertise and innovation that exists here in Poland and in this room. And that's why companies like IBM, uh, HP, United Technologies Corporation, and Google, among many, many others, are heavily invested uh, in Poland, uh, not just to build things, but also to create things. Uh, I visited uh, three Google uh, uh, facilities in Poland, in um, Warsaw, Wrocław, and uh, Kraków. Uh, and two of them are R&D centers, which is uh, the largest number of R&D centers Google has uh, in Europe. And GE similarly employs large numbers of engineers uh, in Poland. They're not here um, by accident. They're here because of the tremendous uh, brain power that Poland has and the contributions Poland can and is making uh, to uh, technology. Uh, a couple of days ago, I was able to announce that on June 20th, my Commerce Secretary, who is the equivalent of, of, of your Minister of Economy, will come to Poland with American business leaders for something we're calling the Business Summit. Which is something that President Obama announced when he was um, here in um, Poland uh, last May. And at this Business Summit, we will have uh, US and Polish government leaders sitting down with uh, leaders from the private sector from both countries to discuss ways in which we can increase uh, the trade between our two countries. Poland is Europe's, uh, the European Union's fastest growing economy. The United States is still uh, the world's largest economy and as much trade as there is between our two countries, we believe that there is scope for much more. I know all of you will be a big part of what, uh, of, of what we're doing. Let me just focus on one uh, particular area of interest in, uh, in our shared prosperity and our hopes for economic growth, and that's in the area of energy. Uh, the United States is one of uh, the biggest investors in Poland in renewable energy, in wind power, in biomass, in biogas, uh, uh, as, and uh, to, a, to a lesser extent in solar power. And uh, this is a, a great thing that uh, we're very proud of. I um, actually greened my uh, house in Warsaw, my embassy, uh, with the help of some American companies, through LED lighting, uh, by um, uh, connecting all of the heaters in my house uh, through a Wi-Fi system so that they're computerized and sensitive to uh, changes outside and to make uh, the house uh, maximally efficient. And we're very, very proud of this investment. Um, the United States is also uh, pursuing um, new sources of, uh, of gas, including uh, shale gas. I know you've probably heard uh, a lot about it. American companies, Canadian companies, Polish companies are, are, are in Poland uh, looking for opportunities to develop uh, shale gas uh, in a, a safe and environmentally responsible way. And in the United States, this has been a game changer. Today in America, 35% of our gas comes from shale gas, whereas 10 years ago, almost none of our gas came from shale gas. And the United States has gone from being a um, importer of uh, gas and now is nearly self-sufficient and is even contemplating the idea of exporting it. It's too soon to know what the prospects are here in Poland, but we're uh, committed to sharing our, our experiences with you as uh, you uh, make your decisions about how to go forward. So um, before I go to your questions, I, I want to say that it's always for me a great privilege and, op and great opportunity to talk to uh, students and to hear what's on your mind. 
Uh, and I want to say that uh, as great as uh, our pasts have been together and our histories are, our cooperation today uh, has not been closer and our futures are tied together. Um, I sometimes say the laws of physics could bring Poland and the United States together. And I think that that's true. And I know that in the 21st century, in this century, our relations will continue to broaden. And thank you all very much. And I look forward to your questions. Szanowni Państwo, czas na, czas na pytania. W związku z tym, że wykład kierowany jest przede wszystkim do studentów, także studentów zapraszam jako tych pierwszych, którzy będą zadawali pytania. So, ladies and gentlemen, this lecture is delivered specifically to students. So, students are, please are asked to, to to ask questions first, and then later on uh, we'll go through our uh, academic stuff. <laughs> Great. Uh, uh, and I should have mentioned it uh, myself. Uh, uh, the, the question is how about visas and how about them? Yeah, there's nothing um, uh, we would like better uh, than to change uh, an outdated law that, that, uh, that requires Poles to uh, apply uh, visas. Unfortunately, Poland is the only country in the Schengen zone that doesn't have visas, uh, uh, that, that needs visas to get into the United States. So we're working hard to change it, to try to change in our laws. Um, uh, our uh, Congress, like your parliament, um, uh, has its own uh, uh, ways. Uh, the President Obama was here last May he pledged uh, to uh, fix this problem, and uh, we're making some progress. And in fact, just uh, three weeks ago, new legislation was uh, introduced into our Congress that would uh, allow Poles to uh, travel to the United States without visas. But um, I, I promised when I took this job that I would not make predictions about when this will change. But what I can tell you is that, first of all, the, the issue uh, it's not about Poland. Uh, uh, Americans feel very, very strongly about Poland. They love Poles, and they want Poles to be able to travel to the United States. By the way, not only because Poland is a great ally, but also because it's good for our economy. We want you to study in the United States, we want you to shop in the United States, we want you to travel in the United States. Uh, and, and of course, it makes our relations much closer. But I would say, and, and, and uh, Alan Greenberg, my consul general, is here, uh, don't, in the meantime, don't be put off, uh, because when you do come, uh, it's, uh, it's fast and it's easy, and uh, the visas uh, are 10 years and multiple years. And, uh, uh, so, so uh, I, but, but I, hope, I hope one day, uh, very soon, uh, we'll be able to announce uh, that this requirement is outdated and something vulnerable. It's, it's easy to do. Uh, essentially, you can call on one day and, uh, and schedule an appointment for the next. And you're usually in and out of the office within an hour. And uh, well over 90% of the people who apply for these get out and they're 10 years old. So it is, it, it, is not, it is not a difficult thing to do. There are rules and there are requirements that people have to meet, uh, but um, uh, the, the vast majority of people here uh, do meet. The spaceship is landed. between university and college? Uh-huh. It's a good question. Um, so uh, I attended, um, usually, usually the difference is that uh, uh, a college only awards 
undergraduate degrees. And a university will also award postgraduate degrees, like master's degrees and uh, PhDs. That's the big difference. Often colleges are smaller and more intimate than universities. Uh, uh, I, I, for example, attended uh, first a college which had uh, 2,200 students in very, very small classes. And then later on, when I went to law school, I attended a university. So the question is, what kind of changes have taken place uh, in, in Poland and the United States in the last year? Um, well, what I would say is, um, uh, uh, to, to reinforce my remarks, uh, we have tried, and I think successfully, to broaden and deepen our relationship. Um, uh, our security relationship has gotten stronger. Um, and uh, I think that the biggest example of that is uh, the signing in 2011 of this agreement to open up an aviation detachment uh, at uh, Wask Air Base near Wuj, where there will be a small number of Americans permanently and then rotating uh, 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 squad up to a squadron of American fighter planes and other planes uh, in and out of uh, the air base. This will be the first continuous presence of American soldiers in Poland. This is significant and something I'm very proud of. Uh, uh, the second thing I'd say is that our, uh, there's a greater emphasis on our economic relations um, for all of the reasons um, I was saying. And on June 20th in Warsaw, this business, what we're calling this business summit, I think, will be an important uh, signal of that. And then the third thing, and maybe the, the newest, is that Poland and the United States are now uh, very close partners in promoting democracy. And of course, we promote democracy together um, over the long term, working very hard in places to the east, like Ukraine and Belarus. But also, uh, we're working together to promote democracy in North Africa and the Middle East. Uh, Poland has sent delegations to Tunisia in close cooperation uh, with the United States, has uh, sent experts uh, to Egypt as well. Uh, there's, there isn't that much knowledge in that part of the world about the democratic transitions in Central Europe. And there's a lot of expertise here in Poland and in this region that uh, those countries could really benefit for. So uh, I'd say uh, maybe the biggest change uh, in our relations is how intense and close our cooperation is on promoting democracy, not just in uh, the eastern neighborhood, but also in North Africa and the Middle East. Ah, and I should say, uh, 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 thank you, Alan. Uh, Poland is uh, 
uh, representing American interests at, at this moment in Syria, we withdrew uh, our diplomats from Syria uh, uh, on account of uh, the uprising. And uh, Poland is uh, our protecting power in Syria. Poland uh, volunteered for this job, and uh, the United States uh, readily uh, uh, chose Poland to take on this responsibility because of its diplomatic expertise and because of its willingness to take these risks uh, on behalf of us. And we're very, very grateful for it. Perhaps uh, explain some financing options for citizens who want to uh, take up service in the United States. Sure. Now, you do, would you like to do that? <laughs> here, now, here, let me give you the, uh, the microphone. Introduce yourself and, and uh, explain. Okay. Uh, my name is Nadia Ziada. I'm uh, vice consul at the consulate in Krakow. I was here actually in December speaking about the summer work and travel program that we have which is still open and available. If any of you are interested, you can apply and you can um, work for the summer in the United States. You get paid pretty well. And then you can also travel for a month before you return here for your studies. So if you're interested, I encourage you to either friend us on Facebook or look at our website uh, so you can get more information. But to your question about financing, uh, there are many different options for financing your studies in the United States. You have more options, I think, if you're at the master's degree level or at the PhD level than the undergraduate level, but there are still options. There's a lot of, um, I know there's a lot of Polish American companies that offer financing for Polish students. Um, unfortunately, it is expensive for everybody to study in the United States, but there are different loans and different uh, private grants and organizations that can help you finance your studies. Um, it is not impossible, lots of students do it. We see lots of students coming in every day for visas to go and study in the United States. Um, and if you would like more information specifically about any schools you're interested in, or if you'd like to help help uh, identifying a school or identifying a program for you to study, um, please visit our website and our education consultant's name is Micah Brzostek. And if you'd like more information also, you can come and see me afterwards and I will give you uh, my contact information. We would love to help you out with any information we can. Yes, has anyone ever participated in the summer work and travel program? Not yet. You have? Yes. Where did you work? Well, it was a Camp America program. Excellent. So Camp America program, you can become a camp, camp counselor in the United States for the summer. The requirement is that you're over 18. Uh, if you are going for the summer work and travel program, which is a different program, you must be over 18 and enrolled in a university and coming back to study in your university. So if you want to do Camp America, you can be a camp counselor. Lots of people, people teach different things to, uh, to the counselors. Some people do support staff in the camps. The camps are located all over the United States. If you do, uh, if you're a camp counselor, you get paid, and you also, but uh, additionally, your housing and your food is paid for by the camp. So you do not have these two expenses. If you do summer work and travel, a lot of students do it with different agencies here in Poland. You find an agency, and they will help you to locate a job in the United States. You can also locate a job on your own and come in and see us with a job offer. Um, there's a form and there's an application process, it's called a J-1 visa. Lots of students are interested, we're getting uh, many students these days coming in every day to the consulate and at the state of Warsaw, uh, you come in and you have to bring your legitimacy and your index to show that you're a student in good standing uh, and that you're currently enrolled and that you'll return to Poland at the end of the summer. Your visa is valid for the summer months, For I think it's for four months. You work, the idea is you work for three months earn a lot, not a lot, you earn money, and then you also earn enough that you have some money to travel to the United States for a month when you're finished. Um, additionally to this, oh, another popular program for Polish students is the uh, au pair program. If you do not like children, do not apply to be an au pair. This is for people that would like to, um, you live with an American family, it's a cultural immersion program, uh, you, your English, you know, English can get a lot of practice working with an American family and living with them, and you are kind of like the nanny, you take care of their kids, you're paid, and also under this program, uh, the family you will work with 
will support uh, education class for you. You can also take classes in the United States while you're working as an au pair. So it's, that's one year, and the summer work and travel camp counselor is for the summer duration. So if anyone is interested, uh, please either ask questions now or you can uh, come and see me later or you can check out our website again it's a j1 visa or uh, our facebook page thank you thank you uh, uh, on the facebook group. so uh, if you haven't checked us out we got a great facebook page we have uh, uh, eight eight thousand fans or more so uh so, so check it out we update it all the time Probably uh, there'll be pictures of this on the Facebook page uh, if they aren't already there. Uh, now. And what I would say that also about the universe, about studying the United States, two things. First of all, the Polish American Freedom Foundation has a very uh, a good program for people like you um, to work at American companies um, uh, as interns over the summer. Uh, and now we have uh, 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 about uh, seven different American companies. Uh, that um, uh, work with the Polish American Freedom Foundation who identify very, very qualified, highly talented students, and they work with um, uh, Americans and other interns at uh, some of America's leading companies. So uh, you should check out the Polish American Freedom Foundation's website uh, if you're interested in that. And then also, I would say, if you're interested in studying in an American university uh, at the graduate level, try to identify the universities that you think best meet your needs, and we can help you do that, and you can also do that through your own research. Uh, and then um, work with them, uh, because uh, at the graduate level, uh, there's been a big change since I was a graduate student, which is that the universities, uh, particularly in some of the sciences uh, and advanced degrees, will generally try to pay for your education. In other words, um, I'm a lawyer, they don't try to pay for my education as lawyers when they graduate have opportunities to make lots of money. But to encourage students in the humanities and some of the other sciences, in general, if you're accepted to the university, the university will find a way to make it possible for you to afford the education. So don't be put off by the price tag. <laughs> Pozwolę jeszcze oddać głosowego, dobrze? There's a time for you, you can ask the question. I have a question. What are the basic differences between the requirements for Polish universities? The basic difference in requirements between Polish and American universities. Wow. And also, American universities are so different. Um, I mean, I, I'll, I'll just say a few, a few differences that I know. First of all, uh, our uh, system is generally that your undergraduate degree takes four years. And frequently in Europe, as well as here, you can get your kind of professional degree. You can start your professional work after high school uh, as part of your uh, university education. And in the United States, in general, you have to do four years of university before you can pursue a, a more advanced degree. So for example, I went to college for four years um, and abbreviating a little bit, I then went to law school uh, for three years to get my law degree, whereas my sister-in-law, who is Scottish, my wife is Scottish, she was able to go straight from um, uh, uh, high school uh, to, uh, to do her, her uh, law degree. And so that, I think, is a difference that's also Like this one, 
uh, uh, and do well, um, there, there are lots of opportunities to do it, and, and the firms will will help you uh, will help you uh, do it. Um, uh, but I just give you an example as a lawyer. Um, I had to take um, an exam in New York, um, but I can't practice law in New Jersey because they don't really do But but in general, yes, if you uh, depending on the field. Um, and particularly in the area of uh, engineering and technical fields, uh, we encourage, the United States wants uh, smart people like you uh, to, uh, to come to the United States uh, to, to work and stuff. Yes? I have a question about security. If the uh, So the, que the question is about our, I'd say, uh, kind of underlying question is about our cooperation as allies, and then specifically about missile defense. So um, uh, the, in um, Lisbon, at the Lisbon summit, which was uh, a year ago, let's say, um, all of the NATO countries agreed on something called the phased adaptive approach to missile defense. And what this is, is it's a missile defense program that is designed to provide protection against missiles for European NATO. And this is the first time that NATO has taken on that, this, that mission. Uh, and it starts in the, in the southern part of uh, European NATO, and it moves north. So the first phase of the fourth phase program uh, is already uh, in place. There are ships in the Mediterranean that are carrying uh, missiles. Uh, they are based in, in Spain, and they travel through the Mediterranean. Uh, there is a radar in uh, Turkey, and there are other elements of the system. And we will formally declare this um, uh, uh, operational uh, in the NATO summit in Chicago. The second phase of missile defense will put uh, missile defense interceptors in Romania, uh, and that's in, uh, in just two years' time. And then in 20... 18, the third phase, uh, the, uh, the, there will be missile interceptors uh, in Poland. And we're already uh, in discussions to prepare uh, and get ready to prepare the site uh, uh, for this. So it's a few years off, but we're, it takes time to plan. And we're committed to the system. President Obama, Secretary Clinton have repeated that. And, uh, and we're already uh, in discussions uh, to get ready to do so. Yes. Let me, let me, my wife, by the way, is a green card holder. <laughs> She's a Scott of old green card. But uh, maybe one of my colleagues uh, can answer the question about green cards. You're referring to the diversity program. You're referring to the diversity program in which Poland has been restored, that is, polls can apply to go to the states as immigrants now, and I encourage you to check out the website for further details. I, it's, a, it's a rather complicated procedure, but you are all welcome to look at that opportunity as well. So you can see I'm a member of a transatlantic family. <laughs> my, 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 wife, my wife is Scottish, 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 not Scottish American, Scottish, Scottish, and my, my kids uh, uh, will, uh, will hold American and NPE passports. Did, did you have a question? No? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Well, then, well, the uh, unusual question. What surprised you most of Poland and what expectation do you have when you became an answer of the United States? I'm sorry, what was the, would you, can you repeat the question? What surprised you the most in Poland when you became an I've been to Poland many times and I was pretty familiar with the place, but what has surprised me the most? Um, I guess the, the biggest surprise wasn't a surprise, but it, it made the biggest impression once I moved here with my family, is that um, uh, everybody in Poland uh, the, who is a generation older than you 
um, has a backstory uh, and just an incredible uh, history um, and had to make incredible decisions at difficult points in Poland's uh, 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 history. And that is uh, very, very impressive. And so when we uh, meet a former uh, prime minister and he talks about how um, uh, back in the day he was a truck driver and how he, and then he became a prime minister, and then he became uh, a, a bank president. He can't believe his story, as he says to me. Um, uh, uh, th this is uh, uh, Prime Minister Bielecki. He says his story is better than Hollywood, and Hollywood wouldn't believe his story. And it is true, so many people uh, at all levels of government and in all walks of life uh, did incredible things uh, during that period of time. And meeting people like that, I think, has made the biggest impression on me. Yes. Uh, uh, so why why did I decide to become ambassador of Poland? Well, the, the, there two big reasons why I decided to become ambassador to Poland. One is that President Obama asked me, <laughs> and two is that Secretary Clinton asked me. <laughs> Those are the two biggest reasons. Uh, but um, my, wife, my, my wife is European, uh, she's, she's a reporter, and she's worked um, uh, in, 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 in Moscow, in Ukraine, uh, and in this part of the world, and so we, we, uh, we wanted to come back to, to this part of the world and be in Europe, so that's, that's part of the reason. I wanted to be, I'm a policy person, and I wanted to be in a country of importance and in a place where I thought I could make a difference, and, um, and Poland uh, fit that bill. And also, uh, I, have, uh, I have some Polish roots. My grandparents were born in um, what's now Ukraine, but was uh, pre-war Poland, and that was also an important part of the bargain for me. Sports scholarships, which I have to admit is uh, is not necessarily my strong suit <laughs> in high school. Uh, but sports are a big part of uh, uh, most kids' experience in the United States, and um, uh, depending on where you live, it can be especially uh, big. Uh, but uh, most high schools have uh, uh, football teams. By the way. Football, football, and American football, or, or, or baseball teams, or basketball teams, or uh, and uh, and frequently colleges, when they make a decision about who they want to accept, they look not only at your grades but you know the whole package, and they look at whether you are doing extracurricular activities, uh, and one of those is sports. Now, if you're really good, uh, sometimes you can get a scholarship uh, for athletics. Uh, to play uh, football or, ba or basketball or, uh, or or even some other sports which are uh, which are less uh, famous in the United States. That was not the case for me, by the way. <laughs> okay, now our question is to Professor Nest. Excellent Ambassador, it was a great privilege uh, to be here and to have your interesting lecture. Uh, during your presentation, I mentioned three pillars of uh, cooperation between Poland and the United States, and, or between the United States and, and Poland, with security, prosperity, and uh, democracy. Uh, I think uh, you have made uh, during uh, all your history a uh, big uh, contribution uh, to the world in, in this uh, pillar. But uh, my question uh, is dealing uh, with uh, prosperity. Uh, I think uh, it's a good occasion to mention about your program. You have established under the second world war, war, war 
uh, it means the United States, the United States Government Research Scholarship, shortly called Fulbright Program. I had the opportunity uh, to attend this program, uh, and I have spent one academic year at the University of California at Berkeley. Uh, and uh, I think it's a good occasion for you to encourage our young uh, assistants, our young professors, uh, to apply for this program. Because really this is a great contribution to the world. Uh, many thousands of uh, young scientists have the opportunity to, to visit your country, to study in your country, and to get a great experience. Uh, this is the first question. Uh, I don't know, may I formulate the second one? Or, okay. Professor and thank and and uh, the professor is doing uh, my job for me because uh, I, I I'm very very glad you mentioned the Fulbright program. How many of you have heard of the Fulbright program? So not not enough. So the Fulbright program is America's most prestigious scholarship program. It sends uh, uh, our most talented people to study overseas, and uh, it picks uh, uh, the most talented students from around the world to study or teach in the United States. And um, the question earlier, who asked the question earlier about studying in the United States and how to pay for it in the university? Um, you should look, uh, if you're good. <laughs> If you're good, you should, you, should, you should very seriously check out the Fulbright program. Um, the United States and Poland have a very, very good Fulbright program, and Poland contributes equally uh, financially. So the number of uh, uh, students and, uh, and professors who can participate in the program is bigger, probably, than when you participated at Berkeley. So uh, uh, it's very easy to, to Google, so check out the Fulbright program. It is a really great program. You can study in the humanities in the sciences uh, and, and at the top flight American universities. And the Fulbright program, the US government pays uh, all of the expenses. So that's, a, that's, a great, that's a great subject on which to end. I want to thank everybody for uh, coming in such large numbers and for asking such great questions. Fujitsu uh, Pobase. Szanowni Państwo, dziękuję bardzo za, za przybycie. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, your international students, thank you very much for coming. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much for uh, the important lecture. Uh, Sir Greenberg, Ms. Nabiziadek, a lot of representatives of the uh, United, States United States government, thank you very much. It was a pleasure.